Robert Reich is, of course, an economist and a great Bernie Sanders supporter. And he actually uh, used to be Secretary of Labor under Bill Clinton. But he's significantly more progressive than the Clintons, and he had a falling out with them for obvious reasons. I mean, they are center-right, pro-corporatist, pro-establishment. He's really not. He's more the flavor of Bernie Sanders, for example. So he took to Facebook this weekend, and he had some thoughts on the election. Now, again, he's been clear from day one. He's done some segments on YouTube and elsewhere, talking about how he prefers Bernie Sanders. He wrote some articles. Um, but he kind of updated what his position is over the weekend. So he said, first of all, Continue to work like hell for Bernie, especially given upcoming primaries in California and New Jersey on June 7th. Uh, putting aside superdelegates, the difference between him and Hillary Clinton isn't huge. So, you know, right up front, there's something that people who are Bernie supporters, they can read that and go right on. Love it. Then he went on to say this, number two, don't demonize or denigrate Hillary Clinton. If she wins the Democratic nomination, I urge you to work like hell for her. She'll be the only person standing between Donald Trump and the presidency of the United States. Besides, as I've said before, she'll be an excellent president for the system we have now, even though Bernie would be the best president for the system we need. So, it's like a fucking, you know, flash grenade went off, and all the Bernie supporters were like, What do you see? And then they fucking hammered him. You know, the, the, how dare you? You know, this is not a can. She's a candidate who is basically a Republican. Supporting her is like supporting a Republican. And the list goes on and on. Some of the points I think were good points. Some of the points I think were bad points and were overly emotional and just made no sense. Um, but what's my general takeaway from this and what's my position? Look, I got to admit, I don't like the way he worded that either. He said... Don't demonize or denigrate Hillary Clinton. Well, what's the difference between the facts, pointing out the facts which portray her in a negative light, but they're facts? What's the difference between that and demonizing or denigrating her? So, for example, if I bring up the fact that she voted for the Iraq War, uh, and in the Iraq War, uh, minimum 200,000 civilians died, and it cost, by 2053, when you add the interest, seven trillion dollars when I bring that up and say hey she's responsible for that or at least partly responsible for that is that demonizing and denigrating is it demonizing and denigrating to say hey come on now you took six hundred seventy five thousand dollars from Goldman Sachs for a few speeches you're obviously gonna return the favor I mean this is we're not stupid this is legalized bribery when I bring that up is that demonizing and denigrating her because if you answer yes if you say hey in a general election you're not allowed to say those things I say you can fuck off because I don't, I care about facts before anything else. So if you tell me to stop bringing up facts because it's going to hurt party loyalty, well, then I say you miss the point of being somebody who cares about justice and truth. So I don't like the way you worded that. Don't demonize and denigrate Hillary. Well, if the facts end up kind of demonizing her because she's done, you know, things that are rightly demonized, like voting for the Patriot Act, well, then I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And those things don't, poof, magically disappear because she's running against big, bad, evil Donald Trump. But see, the difference is, and what I would say is, you don't censor, hold back anything bad about Hillary in the general. What you do is you also bring up the bad things about Donald Trump, and those things are endless. So... The answer is never, ever, ever to suppress, to withhold facts and information and data. The answer is always more information and data. So, and honestly, and that leads to the final point here, when you bring up more information and more data, I truly am of the opinion that in the general election, Hillary Clinton is the lesser of two evils. I agree with Bernie Sanders in that respect. Now... That doesn't mean that I'm necessarily going to vote for her. I'm actually fortunate enough to live in a deep blue state, so I don't have to go vote for Hillary. My state's going to go to Hillary anyway. So I have the ability to go and vote for Jill Stein, which I'll probably do, or write in Bernie Sanders' name. But if I was in a swing state, I am telling you that I would vote for Hillary Clinton. Now, you might be in a swing state and you might disagree with that. Fine. Whatever. But I know if I was in a swing state, I would vote for Hillary. And... 
I'd be holding my nose a little bit, but I would do it because I know, as I said, that it is my genuine opinion that she is the lesser of two evils. She's still evil, and you should, shouldn't should stop bringing up the fact that she's evil, but she is the lesser of two evils. So now here's where some people say, well, I mean, how do you figure that? There's actually some very straightforward answers to that. Number one, Donald Trump says, I'm going to ban all Muslims from entering the country. Now... Whether or not he'll actually do that is a separate question, but I operate off this thing where I take people at their word. And obviously, Hillary and Trump do contradict themselves all the time, so I have to weigh those things accordingly. It's hard to figure out what they actually believe. But if half the time that's your position on Muslims, well, that's so fucking crazy, how can anybody risk it? I want to ban all Muslims from entering the country. Okay, Hillary, as bad as she is, she's not in favor of that. I want Donald Trump says he wants to kick out over 10 million undocumented immigrants. Okay, that's crazy. That's fucking crazy. Uh, Hillary Clinton, for all her faults, and she has horrible, you know, faults on this, in the sense that there are quotes from her in the past about how she wants to deport the illegals and yada yada, but today, what they say today, half the time Donald Trump says the craziest fucking thing, deport over 10 million people. I don't agree with that. When you take all of the rhetoric from both candidates, he is worse on that issue. Uh, the Supreme Court. He r released a list of some of the people he would consider to put on the Supreme Court. All of them are worse than any potential Hillary Clinton pick. Even Merrick Garland, who's... I don't like in many respects because he's very centrist and on some key things he was right-wing. But still, taking all of his views into consideration, Merrick Garland is better than anybody Donald Trump would pick. Social issues today. It took Hillary forever to come to the right positions on, for example, gay marriage. In 2013, she finally came around to it. But all of her positions on social issues today are way better than that of Donald Trump. That's just a fact. Even taking into account all the facts of her past and her history, agreed, it's bad. But today, it is better than Donald Trump. Uh, and then probably the most important ones here. Dude, Donald Trump has said repeatedly, I will bring back torture. I'll bring back torture. I'll bring back worse than waterboarding, and I'm going to torture, quote, even if it doesn't work. So he just wants to torture people. And he's doubled down, he's tripled down, he's quadrupled down on that. There was an interview with Anderson Cooper after a big backlash over his torture comments where he's like, no, I didn't stutter. I'm going to torture people. Okay, well, and if you vote for him, you're voting for somebody, or if you support him, you're supporting somebody who's pro-torture. That says a lot about you if that's the camp that you're in. Now, again, don't suppress any of the facts about Hillary, and there are horrible facts about Hillary. The Iraq War, voting for the Patriot Act, um, we could discuss all of that. But in totality, it is my genuine opinion that he is worse. And then, uh, finally, the two worst here. He said on Fox and Friends, I will kill civilians. I'm gonna massacre people in the Middle East. Now, even if you say, well, come on, he doesn't really believe that. The way he said it shows, proves to me, he's not reflective enough to have thought of it beforehand and rule it out. Like, any moral person would just say, okay, I'm ruling that one out. <laughs> Massacring civilians on purpose in the Middle East? He said it in an assertive way on Fox News, so... Even if he changed his mind after the fact, the fact that he's how fucking old is he and he never made some moral red lines in his head, like, okay, killing civilians, doing terrorism, I'm anti-terrorism, I'm not gonna do that. That's it! You're done! No, no, no good person can support you if that's the case. And then finally, we all know how impulsive he is, as evidenced by his 8,000 Twitter wars. Fucking uh, Bill Maher says it best. He's like, you, this guy's gonna, as you're fucking on the brink of war with Russia, this dude's gonna be in a Twitter war with Demi Lovato. He's an impulsive, thin-skinned prick. And I don't trust that guy with nukes. I do not trust Donald Trump with a fucking army. I don't trust him with an army, I don't trust him with nukes. Now, I also don't trust Hillary Clinton with an army. But here's the thing. I do trust her more than I trust Donald Trump with an army. Okay? So, let's keep all of that in mind. Now, coming full circle here and back to the main point. I don't agree with the way Robert Reich worded this. Look, if he were to say, hey look, continue to fight for Bernie, and by the way, continue to fight for Bernie even if he's just seemingly totally out of it. Like, right now, it's almost impossible for him to get the nomination with pledged delegates. He needs 67% of the delegates moving forward. That's just not gonna happen. But even though that's the case, you should still fight for him. Because you want to keep him in striking distance for the convention, and with the potential indictment for Hillary on the table, you know, who knows what the fuck can happen, and it makes sense to stay in to fight until the end, even if just for the message of Bernie, and even for the speech at the convention, and a million other reasons outside of becoming president. So, like, yeah. You should fight for Bernie, and that should be the main message. 
But then as a secondary message, you can say, hey, and I just want to say, throw in there, in a general, if it is Hillary versus Trump and those are our options, I, I do think Hillary's the lesser of two evils. Still call her out, still acknowledge that she's evil, but it is the lesser of two evils. If he worded it like that, not only would I not attack him, I would come out here and totally defend him and say he's 100% right. Because that's the argument I just made. But when you say things like, don't demonize or denigrate Hillary, that just sounds stupid, because there are many things that she's done which deserve demonization, because they're horrible things. So you're not even demonizing when you demonize, you're just bringing up facts. And the facts point in the direction of sounding like demonization, because those facts are harsh because she did shitty things. So wording it like that, don't demonize or denigrate, that's just silly, and it sounds like, whether or not he's saying it, it sounds like he's saying, suppress, censor, hold back the facts about Hillary because Trump is so bad that you have to do it. No, no, no. You discuss the facts about both in totality. And when you do that, you do come to the conclusion that uh, Trump is a little bit worse than Hillary Clinton, and even though Hillary Clinton is horrific.